No, man, the worst thing I can find in this state, people want to talk about roaches, spiders, not nah, ticks. Ticks are pathetic. They're, they're blood suckers. And you know, you, you know, everybody talks about deer ticks. They fall from the trees and they get in your hair and you don't even know you have them. Next thing you know, you get Lyme disease. Let me tell you something. I used to live in Gibsonton, Florida. They had ticks that looked like walnuts. You'd pick these ticks off a dog and dog would be running around, wouldn't even know. The tick was on them. The tick would be this big. And we used to pick them off and we'd fill up this coffee can. And then we'd throw turpentine in there, you know, we'd set them on fire and they, they blew up like paintballs all over the front porch. It would scare the dogs. People, they come from up north, 95 from Boston to New York. They got to go to Miami and Lauderdale, 75 Ohio, Michigan. Got to come to Tampa. And they all are in love with Florida, but it's crazy. It's like the old saying goes, one for air conditioning and bug spray. Nobody could live here. These Yankees, they want to get in the house because they can't stand it. And they're, they, they're upset if you're outside in your yard working it, because I'm telling you, the only way you can beat this humidity is to get out there amongst it. You can't sit in the air conditioning all day long. I expect to come outside. You won't be able to breathe. During the summer, there'll be nothing but mosquitoes flying around. I get 50 bug bites on my arms and on my legs if I'm wearing shorts. And the bug spray is awful. You can't, you have to just hold your breath when you're, uh, see, I'm just, uh, getting rid of some gnats and mosquitoes right now. Just mosquitoes, I hate them, I can't stand them. Alligators are like the ultimate predator here in Florida. Um, they can just break your neck, they can break your, every bone in your body, basically. They can kill you in an instant on land and in the water. Alligators, they just, they'll get, they'll eat cats, dogs, get up close to uh, the rip water and then an alligator will just pop right out and take your dog right from the leash. Tallahassee kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. This weekend it was pretty and sunny and yesterday it seemed to be flooding. There was flash flood warnings at six o'clock in the morning. You just want to stay inside the whole time and it's such a nice day and you could do so many things outside. You could go hiking, you could go swimming, but it's so hot you just want to stay still and inside in the air conditioning. I've been bitten by a uh, king snake and a hognose snake. I've, I've had some incidents with people. people. People are the most dangerous thing in North Florida. There's a certain mentality, as you well know, that exists here. You know, there, you got briar bushes and rattlesnakes, and, and the people seem to kind of take something from the the souls of the, of the animals and the fauna around here, and they like to fight. So we're in, in the water at night, and I was down about, I don't know, 60, 70 feet, and spearing grouper. And I came up, and it was just covered with jellyfish, and I had to swim about 30 feet through jellyfish it were just stinging me all over my body. It was a pretty painful experience, but I remember that. Well, my son went to Boy Scout camp for a week and he came home and he had a tick on his penis. And I don't know how long it had been there, but finally he came to me and he said to me, Mama, would you please take care of this? And so I had him drop his drawers and <laughs> and I think I got it off with uh, with the pair of tweezers, but I'm not sure. But uh, fortunately, I was able to get it off, and we've never talked about it again in 40 years.
my thoughts about Hurricane Michael, it was a big one. It seems like we're with, quote, climate change and, and uh, global warming, we're having more big ones frequently. We've had 25 one-time-in-a-century events in the last four years. West of here, we have just tens of thousands of people who lost their homes, they've lost their vocations, they've lost, they've lost hope. I mean, it's really sad. Mexico Beach has essentially been wiped off the map. So it's, uh, you know, it's... Spiders, snakes, <laughs> we have a menagerie of, of uh, potential dangerous enemies out there, and, and, and for the most part, they're all unseen. Uh, but uh, it's, I guess it's just, uh, it's just the environment we live in right now. A lot of lightning strikes in this area. In fact, uh, if one would draw a line from the center of Tallahassee to St. Petersburg Beach, you know, whatever that line would be, and 50 miles either side of that line, that area that would be inscribed is the lightning capital of the world. If the air conditions off for several days or good, God forbid, a few weeks, you're gonna get mold. You're gonna get mold and not only mildew, but you get mold. And of course, uh, the one that we fear in this area is black mold, because black mold you don't see. It starts interior and then you only find out about it when it permeates itself out to, this, you know, to the surface of a wall or a ceiling, you'll see it. But by the time you see it, uh, black mold has, uh, has uh, already propagated in sort of a, a giant petri dish for mold and infections and mildew. And, uh, but nevertheless, that's the price you pay, I guess, living here and, and enjoying life. Today's a glorious day. Five days ago, we were in the middle of a hurricane. I hold no ill will for the storm. It's part of what we get here. I was in the house when it hit the house. I just wasn't where the, where the limbs hit, so I'm still alive to tell you about it. The truck is called Alvis because it's from Memphis. The window still works. I love this car. It's going to be sad. Uh, I was hoping that uh, we could keep it in the family, but I think it's gone now. Well, one very important thing I want to add. Golf clubs are fine. No problem. We'll be playing golf soon. Yeah, I was on my porch. It was a really long front porch, like a balcony in front of my house. And there's an owl sitting on the railing, and I was sitting on the other side of the porch staring at it. And it flew down the porch and scratched me with its talons and kept flying. It never landed or anything. And I was walking at night with a friend of mine, and there were no street lights. And we had heard about this neighborhood dog that they hadn't put down that had gotten rabies. Um, we thought he was on the other side of town. Turns out uh, he lived right next to the hostel we were staying at. And yeah, he nabbed me, we ran, we didn't quite find him after that, and I had to go through like three different towns for rabies shots. Having lived here long enough, I know, don't screw with wildlife, <laughs> you won't win. I reached under the hen to grab the eggs and the hen flew up and pecked me until I was bloody. <laughs> I'm about to do a Sasquatch call. I would fear gators, panthers, and bears more than I would fear a Sasquatch because those animals have a tendency to attack. There's never been a reported attack on a human from a Sasquatch, though.
they can be cute, but in my opinion, from the moment they open their beady little eyes in the morning, they just study evil all day long. Two or three times a year at least, you'll have a car towed in, won't run, open the hood, enough a few important wires been chewed, that's why the car won't run. And occasionally you'll open the hood and there'll be a fresh nest in there and you best poke the nest with a stick because don't think automatically just because the car got towed, there's no squirrel in that nest. <laughs> we had one come out of there, I swear that, that squirrel looked like he was 20 pounds, man. We, we chased him around the shop I think he went out one of the side windows and never saw him again. He's probably still lives on Adam Street. They will. They'll get in your cars. They'll they'll chew the soffit vents off of your your roof around the edge of your roof to get in your get in your attic. Uh, they're just they'll eat your flowers on your deck. Uh, if you have unless you have a bulletproof bird feeder, they'll eat most of the feed. The birds won't get any of it. How much does a squirrel weigh? Pound or two? Well, if a squirrel weighed forty pounds they'd rule the earth. There'd be no stopping them. Even a, a small squirrel, you don't want any kind of physical contact because, you know, they got big teeth. And if you ever look at their feet real close, uh, you know, you, you'll know why they can sit up, you know, stand upside down facing forward on a bark of a tree. Yeah, you know, a big squirrel, I mean, you would think you're trying to handle a Tasmanian devil. I've seen the snakes uh, uh, bite dogs, I've treated dogs, it is a terrible, terrible pain and a terrible problem. If you do get bit, uh, the best thing to do is, is to, to stay clear. The striking distance of a rattlesnake is about half to two-thirds of its body. So if you do see one, uh, just walk away, leave him lay, go on about your business. But if you would get bit, you have a 33% chance that that bite is what we call a dry bite. That means that the rattlesnake has not injected any venom, even though you might have two puncture wounds where his fangs are. He realizes that you're too big for him to eat. He doesn't want to waste his venom because his venom is part of his digestive system. A uh, rattlesnake will inject less venom in a rat than he would if he was going to eat a rabbit. Because they, because, in, because the last time I heard a rattlesnake, Hello? Yeah.